Good evening there and welcome back to the channel. Tonight I'm hoping to get a first glimpse of the new comet. Of course I'm talking about the comet C-2023A3 to Shinshan Atlas. Did I rehearse that? Yes, I actually did. <laughs> From now on I'll just refer to it as the comet. Um, yeah, I've come to a uh, dike, it's uh, close to home. We have a free horizon there to the west. The sun has just set and uh, I'm hoping to stand somewhere on the dike on the, on the uh, bicycle path uh, to make a little uh, yeah, personal capture of the comet. And there are some clouds at the horizon, maybe they will clear, maybe they won't. The forecast looks pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure uh, what to expect of this comet. Uh, they call it the comet of the century. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, hey, <laughs> let's find out. Let's go. While I walk to location, let's take a look what we can expect of the comet the coming weeks. Uh, the comet uh, will roughly be uh, into the west and it will be visible right after sunset or uh, more or less uh, 45 minutes after sunset. Uh, you can see it uh, right here. Uh, starting at the 14th um, yeah, when it's a bit dark about an hour after sunset it will be uh, just a little bit above 10 degrees above the horizon uh, if you stretch a fist uh, before your eyes and uh, yeah your fist length is about 10 degrees so uh, that's what you can expect and uh, it will be um, uh, as we go uh, further into October every night it will be a bit higher as you can see so I expect uh, it to be um, yeah pretty well visible and getting better and better uh, as we progress through October uh, because um, by the time it will be low about around the horizon which is good for shooting it with a uh, composition where you include the earth itself uh, it will be darker um, yeah until when the comet will be visible yeah it is really difficult to say because uh, comets uh, are very unpredictable uh, so it can still fall apart uh, and every day it will rise higher in the sky causing more contrast uh, between the comet itself and the dark sky but it will also get further and further away from earth uh, rough estimates are that it will be at least naked eye visible to yeah, until the end of October and maybe a little bit into November but we will be getting into more uh, yeah, photography opportunities there compared to naked eye visibility so if you want to spot the comet uh, you might do it right now uh, if you have the chance of clear skies and start yeah, say about 45 minutes after sunset and look to the west so I think uh, this is where I'll uh, set up. Um, yeah, it's getting dark. The horizon is pretty clear. And it wouldn't surprise me if we will, would be able to photograph it already. I don't see it with the naked eye yet, but uh, I still uh, also don't see stars, so I'm not expecting that. Um, the comet should be positioned uh, the coming week or so. Uh, it's now October 14th, by the way, uh, be, uh, between uh, Venus and uh, the bright star Arcturus. I don't see Venus yet, but I know where the west is. It's about, I think, 10, 15 degrees above the horizon. Yeah, let's uh, set up my 50 millimeters lens and uh, see if something shows up. Pretty exciting. Martinez, by the way, also uh, arrived, but he's uh, back there somewhere in the... Uh, in the fields, he is uh, making a deeper deep scape thingy uh, with the um, steam engine pipe here, uh, which you uh, have seen uh, me coming to. Um, yeah, let's uh, set it up and don't waste any more time. Let's go. <laughs> there is uh, quite a lot of wildlife here, <laughs> as you can hear probably, which is uh, always a bonus uh, if you are doing these uh, kind of things. Um, I'm by the way uh, shooting with my 50 millimeter lens and I'm pretty sure that will be a lot too wide but hey you never know uh, but hey it's the deepest lens uh, I have now. Uh, I'm not setting up a star tracker I don't, uh, don't think it's uh, necessary yet because it will be so light and this lens is an uh, f1.8 lens. Um, yeah Martijn is shooting deeper but okay. Let's see uh, how this uh, baby will come out. I 
so it's uh, getting dark right now. Um, we are seeing the first stars coming out. Didn't spot the comet yet, but uh, I suspect it will be pretty soon. Clouds on the horizon are yeah, seem to be clearing. We have uh, yeah, some pretty good uh, clear patches. Or patches, uh, it's almost 100% clear. <laughs> There are also some other photographers, of course, because it's a yeah, pretty uh, known spot. Um, I think I'll make some uh, test exposures, but uh, the first ones, uh, nothing yet, nothing yet. But uh, we see Venus, Arcturus, and it should be there in between somewhere, but definitely not naked eye visible yet. Yes, there it is. Can you spot it already on a video? So it's uh, getting really, really busy here, but uh, every, everybody is uh, looking for the comet. We uh, are seeing it now, not with the naked eye yet, but it's definitely uh, coming up on the camera screen. You should be able, if I <laughs> duck a little, to see it on the, uh, on the camera. It's much higher than I anticipated. It's, I think, at 15 degrees. Um, yeah, maybe I'll make a selfie. We have to look out for bicycles in the meantime. <laughs> But I super clear, come out looking awesome. So uh, welcome to the star party. <laughs> <laughs> We are seeing the comet definitely with the naked eye now, exactly as I hoped. Uh, just above the bicycle path. I've already uh, made some selfies with me pointing uh, to the comet. It's uh, not very, very bright to the naked eye, but it's definitely coming through. We are having some haze now, but it's still bright enough to come through the haze, which is pretty awesome. So uh, yeah, at 50 millimeters, it's not even that bad. It's uh, much larger than I, uh, than I expected, so I will be fine with 50 millimeters. The tail is yeah, almost going out of my frame even. Maybe that's a little bit exaggerated, but uh, yeah, I'll make some more selfies now, and uh, I hope everybody here is also happy. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> good night here. <laughs> Uh, expect it to be uh, this awkward vlogging wise uh, there's about 10 people there uh, behind uh, or gathering there uh, but I, uh, I don't blame them because it's a beautiful sight uh, we are having some clouds now which are protruding the, uh, the, the tail but uh, yeah I'll just go uh, go further and uh, shoot do you see it by the way on this camera no because it's focusing on my uh, on my head so uh, but I'll try to make some b-roll now and uh, hopefully you can even see it at 20 meters 20 millimeters I think you really can because it's really bright and really large 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 and yes you definitely could So you might be uh, able to still see the comet somewhere around here. It's uh, now definitely setting into the light pollution of what we call in the Netherlands the Randstad. We have big cities there to the west. Uh, but it's still visible, it still shows up on my 50 millimeters. I think you can even see it on the video. People are packing up here. I think I'll take some more shots, maybe do a little uh, small stack. Um, no need for a star tracker at all tonight. Yeah, it's a really beautiful sight. I cannot say it is as bright yet as uh, compared to Neowise, as I remember correctly. But it's still definitely visible, which uh, I didn't expect uh, to be this good. So yeah, maybe the coming days uh, some more uh, shooting. This was not uh, yeah, the main composition I had in mind, but I'll have to drive almost three hours for that. So I really wanted to make sure today if the comet would come out well uh, on a 50 mm lens, which I think it does. And it might even get better and better as it uh, grows higher into the sky. So it will be more dark when it's low enough to um, include in your composition. Yeah, I'll do some more shots and then uh, if the shots turn out to be any good, here are the shots. And for now, I thank you again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.